Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to my let's play of Spell for Three, episode 30. Uh, this is full on gods, or god, as uh, a standalone expansion, but I'm actually playing this through Spell for Three, Reforged Calliant, I'm a topia, and again, this episode 30. Again, I'm recording this at 12.57am on the 18th of June, so if you watched last episode, you know I'm still waiting to hear back from Tiffany Tiffy and stuff. Uh, about a baby and stuff. I kind of explained it last episode at the start. I don't, don't want to go into it at this point because it kind of doing this to keep my focus and everything's okay. Focus. And obviously, I was going to do this episode. He shouldn't phoned and then take her out of the bath. But as you know, then the last episode, she was going Ugh, with her mouth. I think she basically started nodding off and she put her mouth under the water. <laughs> So I'm like, okay, I can't leave you in the bath for another half an hour while I do this episode. <laughs> Last thing you need is losing my other baby. <laughs> so I just checked if she's fine and basically put her to bed. Because again, she was passing out in the bath, she was getting so tired. If she goes to bed, it doesn't matter though. She's probably just going to watch a video for the next eight hours, what she tends to do, even though she's literally passing out and falling asleep. So, we'll see. So yeah, just going to focus on this episode. I was ever since stopped because it's banging enough by Aurora or Potter, they might be able to do something I get a here. phone call or whatever and then hopefully I can then tell you good news everything's fine uh, okay again just want to focus on this right now well, I want good news more than anything but that, that would allow me to focus on this even better because then she phones up now and yay I'm on my way home everything's good everything's fine beautiful and then I don't have to get home I can finish the episode off without a worry instead I'm worried about my baby and she's not different Okay. Well, if I just sit here Sorry. worrying myself sick, it's not going to help. Whatever I'm focused on doing this, it takes my mind over to a certain extent. So, okay, how do we activate this now? Oh, it was with a fire spell, wasn't it? Come on. Oh, ooh, too close. Going now. Too close. Oh, very quickly. Um. I what date was it? Why did he fight that? I'm going to keep that on the health bit low. Um, yeah, guys, just fight that a minute. THQ, you know, um, the people who own this, they're owned by Bracer, but the THQ Nordic, they, they, they're having a, uh, a thing soon. I think it's on Steam. It's easy to find it. Uh, oh, come on! Take my eyes off for one minute. I'm trying to write my phone while they're fighting. Obviously, it didn't work that well. Okay, um. THQ. Nordic Steam. Whatever. Steam Deck thing. Uh, just need one of the other games. Wrestle Wreck Fest, I'll do. THQ Nordic. Links on their main page of Steam. Yeah, showcase. That, that's what I wanted. In August, they have a, a showcase on the second. Was it second of May? Is back. TSQ showcase. No, August the second. The May's gone in it. Second of August, they got a showcase where they apparently be announcing games and showing off some of the games. And of course, obviously, fingers crossed. I doubt it, but it'd be nice. A spell force might get announced, and I and I say I doubt it, because the company who they well the developer should say they put in charge of making spell force free are currently doing, is it Titans? Are they doing a sequel to that number two? What were they called? Uh, Titan. Titan Quest two. The developers of spell force free of, of uh, you know THQ Nordic or Embrace or what you call them put Grim Law Games, who's developed spell force free and all expansions, onto Titan Quest two. So that's why, and then they said there's going to be a big part showing Time Quest 2 off. And I doubt, uh, T sorry, not TCG, no, that Grimlar Games are doing t uh, Titan Quest and Spellforce 4. I'm just a doubt that's happening. But there's nothing stopping Embracer Group or Grim uh, THQ Nordic putting another developer in charge of Spellforce 4. What could be better or worse than Spellforce 3, we don't know. So I guess we'll see. But anyway, if they don't put no developer and they keep it with, um, you know, uh, uh, Grimoire, Grimlore games, sorry. They keep it with Grimlore games, 
the sooner Titan quests out, the sooner they finish any expansions out, the sooner they can get onto a new project like Spell Force 4. But again, there's nothing stopping them moving someone else onto Spell Force 4. So I'm not expecting any Spell Force news on 2nd of August, but it would be lovely if there is some Spell Force news. And also on top of that, we do have Spell Force Conquest, so that would be perfect time to uh, announce a second expansion if we go down that route. Maybe I, I can get all my expansion 1 stuff out before then. <laughs> I don't know, doubt it for the rest of the year, they're making that expansion next year. And then I can do another big one of them if I take a look at. But we'll see. Like I said there may be no Spell Force news whatsoever. But I'm hoping, fingers crossed, a part of me wants Spell Force 4 to be announced or some DLC for the Conquest game to be announced. You know, some kind of Spellforce project. And I do own Titan Quest. The version edition, I think I think I got one DLC for it. And I would like to try it. I've never got around to playing it. But I'm more interested in Titan Quest because Grimoire have done this. Because that's, I do, in general, obviously, you've seen these series with Spellforce 3. In general, I like the games a lot. There is, and I say in general because I'm not going to say they're the perfect games of all time. Like, this particular expansion on its own, that, that whole... Couldn't advance because it was shut by one five food after you told me about the thing before I got to there, stuff like that. But they're not perfect, but they're great. They're good, and they're a great series overall. So I love it to have another. Again, I don't think they're gonna announce another expansion for this game. Uh, I think Spell Force Three is done, but Spell Force Four or or DLC two for the Conquest game, obviously done by a different developer. Uh, speaking of that, if we go to Spell Force uh, Conquest, quick, see if they've actually announced anything. I don't think they have, because uh, they're done by owned by Gravity. Did they get anything under their little thingy? Free Spell Force Conquest patch. I think that was the last thing they did, April tenth, and they added mod support. Nine out of ten when they had mod support. Some games do it on day one, granted. Now I'm telling you mod support is normally they come to life with that game's ending and here's the uh, full mod support, the stuff that we use or we've uh, 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 changed it to a certain way that is more user friendly because we're not making the game no more. And I feel that could be with the mod support coming after DLC 1 for the Conquest game, could be there, you know, no more stuff. Same with Spell Force 3, I believe, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the mod support came after the last expansion. Like, correct me again if I'm wrong, I might be wrong with that. But again, I always feel that's more or less that some, some companies just do it from day one, they want it to be fully moddable, others kind of throw it in at the end. And I feel thrown at the end, in one way, is a little better. And I say it's a little better for the simple reason it allows the developers to get all their stuff out, and then they give back to the community who can run with it. Where if you have the mod support from day one, you got a lot of players modding it, and then people complaining about the mods breaking when the developers update it. People go to developers, this is boss, this is boss, but it's not boss because you have a mod turned on. Or you have the uh, one of the, my, my, I think the silliest thing again. I, I believe it's more Warhammer Total War. I've seen this. It's probably having other games too. People ask what races do you want in the game, and then someone's put a race, uh, and, and like next race, and then someone in the underneath. We don't need that. We have a mod for it. And I, I, my mouth just drops when I see that because I'm thinking, firstly, about what, probably, again, I don't know the exact statistics, but probably about 1%, 2% of the community are using that mod with that particular race in. And as soon as the developers add that race or add a different race, update the game, that mod, 9 out of 10, is broke. Meaning, for you to keep playing with that mod, with that race that you really, really like, you need that person to to update it. And it's a random person, so he might not ever want to mod again, so he never updates it. He unfortunately gets hit by a buzz. And it could be a female too, I'm just saying he for the sake of it, but it could be female too. Could get hit by a buzz and never mod again. They could be doing this and they've got them a job in the industry, so not modding it because they're actually in another game company now. You know, there's multiple reasons why they won't do it again. But you want to, or that guy or girl may take three months to mod the game. To, to update their mod for you to play with your race again. So you're not going to play your game now because you're waiting on this mod. When if the devs put them in and you like that race, maybe they're not as good, in your opinion, as the guy who made the mod or the girl who made that mod. But at least you know they're going to be working every damn patch. And if they're not, they're going to be a quick hot fix to get them working quick. Because the actual developers are making it. But once they turn around and they were finished with the game and they're not going to make anything else, here's mod tools, take the ball and run with it. That's different now. Because every mod, theoretically, don't need to be updated as often. Because as long as they work, it works. 
So like I said, there's nothing wrong with modding, but I just don't understand that logic. Like, oh, I, I, I don't have that race because I have a mod that does that. Like, yeah, you, like you, like maybe what five hundred people, a thousand people playing with that mod, where you got like a million people over here who don't. And as soon as the next patch, that mod's broke, and whatever reason the person updated it or takes so long to update it. Like I would have heard that the devs to put that race in. Obviously, once it's finished. Got mod to Archer 10. When it, the game's finished, do a full conversion mod. Brilliant. You know, you play the game to death for bat multiple times. You're bored with it. Full conversion mod. Turn this game into Spell Force. For example, turn it into Bully Star Wars. Wow, we got Star Wars now. You know, that's great. That's what mods are for. And it also lets people test and the skills and improve and then hopefully that they can use that on the portfolio to get into game companies and stuff. And actually become proper devs and stuff. You know, paid professional devs. Because I guess technically saying that a, mod, a mod it could be better than an actual paid dev if he's good enough. But I mean a professional dev. So again, I've got nothing against mods. I just don't get that logic. Well, you shouldn't add race A because somebody's modded it in it already. Like, I would prefer the real devs. And I say real devs meaning the actual company devs who own the rights to the game add race A into it versus relying on a mod. Obviously, if the game's dead and they're never going to make it again, like uh, Dawn of War, I think that had, after suspension, about seven, eight, it could be even nine uh, Warhammer 40k races in it. Without sitting here and trying to work everyone out, I think it's like seven or nine. And there's still probably about 15, 20 of them all together. So people have modded that to death now because they moved on to Dawn of War 2. They moved on to Dawn of War 3. Hell, they make a couple of heroes. They, I, I can't remember if Dawn of War, then a couple of heroes came out. Or was a couple of heroes in Dawn of War. But either way, they've made a couple of heroes 2 since then. They've made a couple of heroes 3 since then. You know, they might have I mean, some other games I'm not even thinking about the main since then. In other words, they ain't updating Dawn of War 1. And if they are going to update Dawn of War 1, it might be the random patch just to make sure it still works on the system 20 years later or whatever. 30 years later, 40 years later. I'm thinking it came out like 2005, 8, maybe, 5 or 8. I'm getting them just off my brain, I could be wrong. So I've got a feeling to, uh, Dawn of War 2 came out 2009. So it's probably more early 2000 than, you know, like, 5, 2, 3. I know, st I think Spellforce 1 was 2003. And I think Spellforce, I'm sure, was out before Dawn of War. Or I was playing Spellforce and playing the Dawn of War uh, demo around the same time. Something like that. But, yeah, so, again, I'm not against mods, but I just don't understand that whole logic. Like, I want Race A in. You shouldn't hot Race A in because I have a mod that does it better. But then, next patch, that's mods bust. The person who made that mod may not make it again, may not update it. So and so else might decide to make a mod instead, and theirs might be worse. And you're relying on this one mod, this person who you don't know. Like if you're the person who's making it, and you're like, I'm always gonna update this mod, so I've got my race. Then that, I guess that's a little different. But nine to ten, that's not the case. And that doesn't, and that's do the same for everybody else. They don't know you. If he this looks oh, seriously, blew that up and then we still need a key. Fuck. So, yeah, so again, I got nothing against mods, and mods are good, but that's why I tend to not use mods on the channel too much. Unless, like I said, it's going to be like, um, what's that game, Phoenix Point? I think I put that on the channel for a take a look at, at least once. I believe they completely finished with their game now, to the point they actually advertise a full conversion mod on their game. And everyone says it's better than the main vanilla game and everything, and they've endorsed it. So to me, that's a mod you put in, that's a mod you can play, and you know that the devs aren't going to suddenly randomly come out and ruin it. Head towards if they do, they're little jack at that point. Because <laughs> they've endorsed this mod. And they're even recommending people to install it over their own game, especially if you finish their main game. So to me, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's the type of thing what I like when, when mods do that. But obviously something like Warhammer, Total War, game's not finished. Both Force 3, unfortunately, yes. So adding mods to that for this now, yes, go go to Hammerback. You know, add more content to the main game, more missions, brilliant. Do a complete conversion mod, brilliant. Go to Hammerback. Warhammer, I wish people would hold off a bit more. Basically, because again, I feel a little bit of a waste. Especially if you're using them as a reason for devs not to add that race to the game. Which because some sort of modded it. You know what I'm saying? I feel that's just silly. Oh, 
Because I've also seen people, I think it was years ago. I can't remember. It may have been Stardark. It may have been a different game company. But I just remember this uh, This dev came on. Oh, it's a guy again. I just remember this dev came on for two weeks straight trying to help this person to get the game to, to run right because there was a bug or stopping them. And then they found out that the game, this is where again when modding was quite new. And then they found out that they finally re reviewed after they got the save game and stuff that you're not you're using a modded version. And there's yeah, and there's nothing we can do then. We're not going to fix you know a thousand people's mods out there to run with our game. Turn the mods off. Do you have the have have that bit bug problem still? If the answer is no, then there's nothing we can do about it. If the answer is yes, then fine, we will help. And I also saw one person do something similar to the point when he described what was wrong with it. The dev turned around, well, I'm not helping you. And they're like, why? And they're like, because uh, you're using a pirated version. You go, how do you know that? Basically, uh, I've programmed a game to only do that in a pirated version. <laughs> and he was trying to get the guy to fix his game. A pirated version was being getting paid for. Like... To me, that's just messing around with devs. That's just messing around with their time when they could be adding new content to the games. They could be working on new games. They could be fixing actual bugs for their actual games that real players have got instead of messing around with someone's mod. That's why the, uh, most people don't understand that now. And I see the thing when someone comes on, I'm having this bug, don't have to get it. And the first thing a player will come on and say, uh, are you playing vanilla or do you have mods on? If you've got mods on, remove them all. Is it still there? And then get back to us. And then if you come up, all mods are off. I never install a mod. Okay. Now we can try and help you. Now we want a dev to come and help. Now that's that's a, that's proper. That's for a proper customer. But if you turn around, yeah, I've got this mod, this mod, and they're like, that's probably why I turn the mods off. Now see if that works. Well, I turn the mods off. It, it's not there anymore. So that was your problem then, mate. But I want it to work with the mod. Well, then you got to talk to the mod people who make the game then. Sorry, not the, the mod people who, who, who do the mods, not the people who make the game. The, the mod people who make the mods to sort out that bug for you. You can't. The devs aren't going to do it. It's just a waste of their time. I'm sorry. I can't. I just can't tell you She make herself die? So it looks. Okay, let's just have a drink quick now. Give you a look. That's why. What's this? Ooh. Loop. That's one thing. Rings seem to fit. What is that? A marriage amulet, Grangwa thinks. Okay, wedding ring. Brittle bones give them to each other when they choose a mate. They wear them for the rest of their lives. And they get a new one every time they mate again? That is a lot of amulets. Right no, brittle bones only have one mate. Or try to at least when they find a new one they discard the old amulet or sometimes they mate in secrets that makes no sense okay back everybody just got a phone call from one over toothy and she's on the phone now speaker so i don't know if she speaks if she'll hear her on a mic i don't know that someone's going to do this what and then end because she's going to make fitness to get home but what you just said basically you're fine it but it could be coning or something you've got was a muscle separating, what might mean you might need surgery after she give birth, but hopefully she won't. And that could be what caused the pain, but other than that, she's fine, baby's fine, and she's on the way home now. So, that's good. So we'll just finish this last, like, five to seven minutes of this episode off, and I'm just going to keep her on the phone, so if she hears her in the background, that's why. So if she, has, if she wants to say something, <laughs> it's up to her. And then I've done these two episodes I need to do while she's gone. I hit my six episode target. So we gotta kill that wyvern over there. And there's also someone at the top. And apparently we need a key for that chest. We just found out. Well, that's good though. She's better. Her baby's safe. Yay. Well, that's why I wanted to focus on doing this. To take my mind off it. But when I tried to explain them on the other episode, I was getting worked up over it. Found some bricks. Oh, what I was going to say before the phone call... I like on the game how they like all the, the, the brittle bones and the human weapon don't work for for the trolls. What makes sense are smaller and you can convert them. But why do the rings work? Like I, I think they seem a lot bigger. I don't think they would fit. 
It makes more sense why they can only have one per hand. Maybe they only fit the little fingers. But then when you look at the earlier spell forces with the humans, they can still only have one per hand. <laughs> so... Okay, so what's up here? Look. Oh, who's this? Another brittle bone. And Greenskins. Oh, they're working with the greenskins. Huh. Crush sticks ready. Oh god. Norse claws. Trolls, careful, chief. What are the dead things over there looks like? Uh, I guess we'll go and chat to them a minute. What is that? No afraid. Moon can come in fleece. Oh, please. Should we? No. You speak, yeah, don't you? To you? No. The brittle bone must have imagined <laughs> that. Must imagined it. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a sense of humor. Color me and Outcast. What's your tribe? Sun Heights? No, we're not the Sun Heights. Moonkins. Okay, so we can lie to him. We can say it matters not. Moonkin, what we are, or Swamp Stompers. I, I feel this guy's the one who killed the other trolls. So let's say it matters not. So we're not directly lying. It matters not. Mm. Well, Petty, Why? what is the brittle bone doing out here? He belongs to the village? Mm, not quite. I guess you could call me a drifter. Drift. I go from place to place, guided by the eternal pursuit of happiness. Yeah. An outcast. Pursuit of happiness, <laughs> that doesn't mean. Maybe. Okay, what can we say? It is not unusual for a brittle bone to be friends with greenskins. I thought it would be unusual. I guess it's not. I thought it would be. It is not oh, usual, usual that is for right. a brittle bone to be friends with greenskins. Orcs. Easy, Narek. They're right. As much as I value these gentlemen, though, our relationship is mostly business. Okay, business with the orcs. Trolling these parts has become quite perilous in recent days, and they protect me. They protect so you? Why? They swore a blood oath to him. Not quite. I just pay them well. Oh, he pays them. That makes sense. So your money runs out, they will leave. But why greenskins? Why not other brittle bones? But why greenskins? Why not other brittle bones? Oh, let's just say I've never gotten along that well with other humans. Mm. That doesn't sound good. That Krog understands. He didn't got well with humans, that doesn't sound good. Chief Dumay asked the... Seriously? Okay, I don't like that. I literally said it doesn't matter what we're called. And then, then one of the options is Chief Dumay asked the Moonkin, I'll tell them what we are. I just told I didn't want to. To crush a Y before them. Have the outcast seen it? Why do we have to put a name in it when I said I didn't want to tell them? Uh. Oh, and even the top one, the one you have to do. Well then, the Moonkin will leave. I said I didn't... I, I particularly after one, it doesn't matter what we're called. And it's forced me to tell him. Seriously, that's stupid. Chieftain Mayor asked the Moonkin to crush a wyvern for Just them. Give him a name. Has the outcast seen that's it? Fine. That's my name now, is it? <laughs> yes, I've seen that beast. It's southeast from here, by the ravine. It's dangerous though, so look out. It will not kill a troll. What's the outcast doing here? What is the outcast doing here? Me? Yeah, you. Oh, just wandering around. What's your business? business? As usual. You going around killing trolls, taking the tusks? Well then, the Moonkin will leave. Actually, wait. Uh oh. I have a the proposal whole, whole, for you. Proposal. Hmm. I am. Um... Wasn't quite true. Truthful oh, not truthful. I said I'm just a drifter. You're gonna tackle us? What's happening? Fact is, I'm a traitor of labor. Labor. He's a slaver. Isn't he? A slaver. Isn't a slaver. Yeah, a slave. That is what the outcast says. He's a slave. What an ugly word. Ugly words. That's what you but, are. Well, yes, I am. Question is, how would you feel about a little sideline? You bring me the villagers, and I make you. Seriously, rich. no. Plus, you get to take anything you fancy. <laughs> Zaska has no love for slavers, but still, this could create cruelty. I don't want to no. Oh, I do need cruelty. You don't know why I'm just raiding the village. First, Zaska refuses to raid the village and wants to peace talk, and now he wants to enslave yeah, them. I don't want to slave them. There is no bigger sin before Magua than kin slaughter and kin treason, Zaska. Good thing they are brittle bones then. Zaska wanted to peace talk because it was the smart thing to do. No. Things have changed. I like the way you think, my friend. Oh god, we're not here, sorry. They have a pact. No, the moon king will never help slaver. The outcast is a king trader and Cub will not allow him to look. Oh, we can attack him. No, the outcast, anything about the dead troll? Ask him about that There's first. There's a dead troll down at the mountain. A fleshkin. Knows the outcast anything about the dead troll? 
A dead troll, yes. you say? Yes, you do it. The outcast speaks true. Below the village. Hmm. Afraid I'll have to pass. Narek? What about you? Me, no. no idea what they're talking about. There you have it. Okay, are they hiding that? What will the outcast do with the village of brittle bones? What will the outcast do with the village brittle bones if he enslaves them? Ah, that depends on the highest bidder. But nothing too cruel, don't worry. You'll just get a taste of what it was like for me. Wants to make them slaves. The brittle bone wants to make them slaves. The entire village. That's right. Ah, the moonkin should just crush him, chieftain. The brittle bone is a traitor to his own kin. <laughs> my own kin? My mother tossed me into the gutter because she preferred the booze. Then my wife was killed because she was an elf. Wow. I don't owe my own kin anything, troll. But fine. It's just an offer. Take it or leave it. And before you get any stupid ideas, my green skin friends have dealt with creatures your size before. Plenty of times. Plenty of times. Do you want to kill the troll then? Hmm. Looks like we've got a lot more to say. We're at 26 minutes. We've got a minute over. So I think we'll save here and get to continue this conversation next episode. Um, so let me give it a different name. Dupa, dupa, dupa. Over to Piaz. Parole. Camp. Save 11. Save. So I hope you enjoyed that. Please like, subscribe, all the good stuff. I've been Actopia. You also thanks for watching. And so, TV, you want to say bye? It's since you're on the phone. See if it goes through. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.